Hello everyone. Today we will be walking over some step-by-step -step instruction on how to set up and use the Yeti mic. First off, Markham Public Library offers the Yeti Pro, which is one of the most versatile mic Yeti Blue offers in their microphone products. It is good for recording podcasts, interviews, music, streamings, and more. You can record right on your desk with your computer or set up in an extensive audio system. When you borrow the Yeti mic from Markham Public Library, the mic and accessory comes in a box. You have the mic, one USB cable to connect the mic to a computer, one 5-pin XLR to 3-pin XLR for left and right audio when connecting to a soundboard or mixing board, and finally, one manual. This mic does not come with any power plug because it is powered through the cables. One thing to note is that the Yeti Pro is a condenser mic, which means it is sensitive and it picks up everything around you. That means it will pick up your cat down the hall or the small vibration when you try to quietly put down your cup of coffee on the table. If you cannot record in a quiet space, then perhaps a condenser mic might not be ideal to you. A dynamic mic, however, might be a better option. Check out our digital equipment in our catalog to explore what we have. What are the limitations? Before you set up your recording space, here are some limitations on what type of computer system it can run on. On the Yeti Blue website, all their microphones are currently fit to use on Windows 7, 8.1, and 10. And for Apple computer, it is compatible with Mac OS 10.10 .10 or higher. If you have the right operating system for the microphone, the rest of the video will teach you how to set up and use your microphone correctly. How to set up. Once you have plugged in the cable, you will notice four knobs and buttons. The mute buttons allow you to mute and unmute the audio when you're recording. Then there is a volume knob. It is to adjust the volume that is going into your earphone or headphone, but it does not affect how loud your audio is when you are recording. Now, on the back, there are two other knobs that are a little bit tricky. First, we have the gain. It represents how sensitive the mic is to sound and how much it can pick up. A good recommendation is to turn it all the way down and slowly turn it back up to record and see which setting is best for your setup in your space. Too much gain can lead to sound popping and it can pick up too much noise in the background and it can make your audio oversaturated. Number two, the pattern modes knob. There are four different modes on this mic and each mode tells the mic how and where to pick up audio. You want to pick the mode that best describes your recording setting. First, we have the cardioid mode. It is the one that looks like a heart. It is for one person speaking directly into the mic. So it is great for podcasts, voiceovers, and even one singing voice. Then we have the stereo mode. It looks like two rings overlapped together. It is best for sound that are coming from all around, but still has one main vocalist, such as more than one instrument is playing piano, percussion, and one singer that is singing right at the mic. Then you have the omnidirectional. It is the one that shapes like a circle. It is great for a sound that is all rounded and record 360. This is a good setting for conference call, vocal groups singing all around the mic, or even roundtables podcasts. Lastly, there is the bidirectional. This is the one that's shaped like an eight. The setting is to pick up sound at the front and the back of the mic. This is great for one-on-one -on -one interviews or two people singing duels. How to use it. Now let's get into how to use this mic correctly. First, don't let the mic stand fool you. The correct way to speak into your mic is to make sure the mic is standing on the side and the blue logo is facing you. If you're facing the mic as if you are eating it like a hot dog, then you are using it the wrong way. As for distance, keep a good six inch away from the mic when you're recording. It is also a good idea to add a pop filter to your setup. It will soften your words, especially if you're pronouncing words with T and P. It will reduce the P and the T sound significantly. Markham Public Library also lends out pop filters, so go ahead and check out our catalog after the video. 
Lastly, get the mic off your desk or try not to touch your desk at all during the recording because it is a condenser mic and it will pick up all vibration like your keyboard typing, your mouse clicking, or even touching the table. The last thing you need to know before you start hitting the record button is to find a software to record your audio into. There are many recording software out there and the most versatile for all operating system is Audacity. It is free to download and easy to use. Check out our other how-to videos to learn how to get started with Audacity and some simple tips to follow to achieve a rich and clear audio.